Chapter 19 Wednesday morning, all the signs are gone. I am telling you, Addie informs me as quick as she can latch onto my arm after I enter the school premises. It's Miss Wyman. I doubt it, I say. It's probably Mr. Kiley. I don't mean Mr. Kiley himself, but you know, the school. You have to have permission to put stuff up on the walls, which we did not exactly get. Well, I'm going to say something, goes Addie. Such as? Such as, did anybody ever hear of the First Amendment? It's my turn to latch onto an arm, which I do with hers. Stop making everything a federal case, I tell her. All we've got to do is let the school in on what we're doing. I say we go to Mr. Kiley and... Ms. Carl, Mr. Goodspeed. Miss Wyman is standing there all of a sudden with her hands on her hips like a cop who's pulled us over, except there was no siren to warn us. Addie almost collides with her, and I do a quick study of the two of them, both tall with big bones and their hair cut short almost the same way. If I wasn't so sure that Addie is going to grow up to become the head of some big company or president of the United States or something, I would swear in looking at the two of them that I'm seeing Addie's future. As Miss Wyman commences to speak, she forms her mouth into the perfect imitation of a smile. May I ask the two of you to hurry at your lockers this morning so that I may have a word with you before homeroom? I note that Addie is about to say something, probably along the lines of, until the home bell rings, homeroom bell rings, we are private citizens and you have no right to tell us what to do with our time. So I gently coincide the tip of my foot with the bony part of her ankle, and the only word that comes out of her mouth is, Ouch! That hurt! Addie complains as Miss Wyman walks away, chirping at other kids in the hall like they're munchkins and she's Glinda, the good witch of the north. Sorry, I tell Addie. I just didn't want you saying anything that was going to make her want second helpings of our livers. We're already in enough trouble. Trouble? Addie goes. For what? We didn't do anything wrong. Miss Wyman doesn't see it this way. I just don't understand why you can't work within the system, she is telling us minutes later. We are standing in front of her desk. I don't know what you're talking about, Addie goes. One career option I rule out for her is diplomat. Don't play games with me, Miss Carl, Miss Wyman snaps back. Addie and I jump like it's a rubber band she snapped at us. You know perfectly well that you were behind those signs that were put up in the around the school yesterday. There is no use denying it. You were seen by a teacher who reported you to Mr. Kiley. I am not here to debate the worthiness of the message. I am here to remind you that you were told there is no need for a third party, and therefore there is no third party. Who says the signs have anything to do with a third party? Addie jumps in with both feet before I can stop her. What about freedom of speech, freedom of expression? Miss Wyman's sigh is like a blanket she pulls over her on a cold morning. Addie is the cold morning. You can tell Miss Wyman just wishes she would go away. Miss Wyman, I say, do you think we could talk to Mr. Kiley about this? Mr. Kiley asked me to speak with you, Miss Wyman goes. It's true that the signs have to do with a third party, I tell her, fast so she can't get another word in, and besides, I'm hoping the truth will disarm her. But it's different from the Freedom Party, and it's different from the other two parties, too. It has a message that needs to be heard. I'm sorry we didn't get permission to put up the signs. We know we should have. Sometimes kids just act impulsively, but it's because we have strong feelings, not because we're trying to make trouble. Miss Wyman's mouth is slightly open, like she's ready at a moment's notice to put it to work, but she doesn't say anything. I can tell that she's actually listening. Addie must realize this, too, because she doesn't jump in with her own ready-for-action mouth and lets me keep talking. Maybe if we could meet with you and Mr. Kiley, I go on. If you would just hear what it is we're trying to do, you'd understand about the signs. Will you do that, Miss Wyman? Please, just hear us. Miss Wyman gives me a good study then, looking me over the way I look people over, except not when they know I'm looking, as if she's trying to see what's on the inside even more than what's on the outside. Bobby, she says, you are full of surprises this morning. You're usually so quiet. Yes, ma'am, I say. And you're very convincing in your sincerity, as well as your words. 
I will speak to Mr. Kiley and will let you know if we'll meet you, meet with you. If Addie goes and I reintroduce my toe and her ankle. That's great, I tell Miss Wyman. Thank you. Thank you so much. Doesn't she think I'm sincere? Addie hisses at me as we move away from Miss Wyman's desk. Or you could say, that was so cool, Bobby. Way to go, I point out and leave her with that thought as we turn away from each other to take our seats. The meeting takes place during lunch period. I do not know how it is that Miss Wyman decided from the beginning that I was as involved as Addie, but it's a good thing she did because if I had not been at the meeting, the no-name party would have had a shorter lifespan than a fruit fly. Addie doesn't even wait for her fanny to hit the chair before she starts talking. Mr. Kiley, he, she says, it's not fair that our signs were taken down. What they represent is important. And what about freedom of... Stop, Mr. Kiley says, without raising his voice. He folds shut an appointment book and rolls up the sleeves of his shirt. I note that he has managed a much better coordination of shirt and tie today. Although the jacket slung over the back of a nearby chair is a disaster, haberdashery speak haberdasherily speaking. Miss Wyman clears her throat. As I explained to you, Mr. Kiley, she says, it was Bobby's argument that convinced me we should have this meeting. Perhaps he should be the one to speak. It's a free country, Mr. Kiley says. Either one of you can speak. Bobby, Addie, I just don't want to hear anything more about what's fair or not fair. I want to hear specifics. I want to know what it is you are doing and why you think you should be allowed to do it. You just said yourself it's a free country, Addie says. Fastest mouth in the West, or anywhere else for that matter. Well, why shouldn't... Did I just not say that this is what I don't want to hear, Mr. Kiley says. You know, Addie, ever since you started this business of refusing to say the pledge, I have sensed in you a rebel without a cause. But, uh-uh-uh, I want to hear specifics. Mr. Kiley, I butt in, hoping to head Addie off. I have been called names ever since the third grade, on account of my being, you know, chunky. My friends have been called names, too. So have a lot of other kids. The other day, Daryl Williams was called a name. Dweeb, Addie interjects. Right. And I thought, I mean, we thought, that that shouldn't be allowed. So we came up with the idea of the no-name party. And that's what makes us different from the other parties. That's what our platform is about, making kids think about name-calling and, well, putting an end to it, if we can. We put up those signs yesterday to get everybody talking about it, and it worked. Mr. Kiley nods his head. I take it to mean, go on, but I'm not sure what else I have to say. I open my mouth again and hope for the best. Addie wanted to start a third party because she believes that we have a long way to go in this country until there is real justice and liberty for all. That's why she stopped saying the pledge, Mr. Kiley, not because she's a rebel without a cause, although that is a good movie. I note out of the corner of my oculi that this gets a smile, a real smile, from both moviegoers of the older generation. I press on. The problem with the Freedom Party was that it wasn't specific enough. Even saying we represented minorities didn't mean a whole lot. But saying we want to put an end to kids being called names? Well... That does have meaning. And you have to admit, it would make a difference. I mean, you don't have to admit anything. I'm not telling you what to do. I just mean... Mr. Kiley's expression stops me. I can tell that he has heard enough and that I've won. I'm thinking, I really am a good salesman. Thinking I'm good at something makes me smile. I can't help myself. Very impressive, Bobby. Mr. Kiley goes... I wish I could say that school policy had put an end to the kind of name-calling you're talking about, but it hasn't. I'm sure Miss Wyman would agree with me, knowing how much she cares about self-esteem, that anything you can do among your peers would be of great help. I want to give the no-name party the go-ahead. What do you say, Miss Wyman? I look over at Miss Wyman, and she is looking at me, like one human being looking at another, and it strikes me how funny it is that grown-ups, especially in school, always call each other Mr. This and Ms. That. And I think how different it would be to call Ms. Wyman Ellen, which is her first name, and Mr. Kylie Tim, which is his first name, and I get to wondering what Mr. Kellerman's first name is. You would think I would have more important things to do than to think about at this particular moment, but this is how my mind works.
Miss Wyman brings me back to reality. You've presented a very compelling argument, she says to me. Good luck. I cannot believe it. The no-name party is in business, and all on account of me. As we are leaving the office, I am worried that Addie will be mad at me. After all, the whole thing was her idea, and it's starting to feel like I've taken it away from her. But she isn't mad. Not at all. What she says when we get in the clear is, That was so cool, Bobby. Way to go. 